I've been using large OLED TVs as my computer monitor for almost four years now, since that first LG C1048 inch came out in 2020. And while I did switch over to the 42 inch version a bit ago, it wasn't much of an upgrade for me. But now I'm switching over to this new Alienware 32 inch QD OLED monitor, and I think this is the upgrade I've been waiting for. This monitor comes with 4K resolution at 32 inches for significantly better pixel density that makes text and details look so much more clear. That beautiful QD OLED panel gives you vibrant and colorful images, and the anti-reflective material works really well if you don't like how mirror reflective the LG TVs can be. And it has true monitor features like auto standby, auto input switching, and a simple physical control that makes it more user friendly in a computer desk setup. And it can run 4K 240Hz, which is noticeable from 120Hz, even while just using it during productivity work. But switching from the LG OLED TV to this Alienware monitor does come with some downsides for me personally. While the smaller size is nice for that pixel density clarity, it also means I need to run this at 125% scaling and lose some screen real estate. So I can't fit as many windowed applications side by side versus the 42 inch. And for console gamers, there's no built-in 3.5 millimeter audio jack coming out of the display. So for my simple audio setup, I'll need to use a separate USB DAC coming out of the PS5 or find an HDMI eARC extractor to pull audio, which is a little annoying for my setup. The included stand is huge, sticking the display out for just over 30 centimeters from the back, so I definitely recommend a monitor arm for this on shorter desks. And if your room is brightly lit like mine, with a lot of natural lighting, the blacks turn grey in comparison, which really take away from the normal OLED inky blacks. Even with those downsides, I still consider this a big upgrade for me personally, but it's debatable whether a $1200 USD price tag is worth the upgrade if you already have an existing OLED setup. And I really recommend to wait and see because there's a lot more designs coming out this year from different companies that could be a better option. Hi I'm David, and at least for now, I consider this my new favorite monitor to use for both gaming and productivity. For productivity, I like to use this 32 inch monitor like an ultra wide display. I'll use the Fancy Zone app to arrange a single window in the center for my everyday tasks, and then I can drag it to a side-by-side -side configuration when I need to multitask. Or I can easily drag and resize them in a priority setup with some reference material on the side, switch to a single ultra-wide setup for tasks like video editing, and full screen lets me see the big picture when doing design work. For PC gaming on mouse and keyboard, this is still a little too tall for me, so I'll just play it in an ultra-wide windowed mode, but if I'm on computer or on my PS5, I find 32 inches full screen just perfect for immersive gaming laying back on my office chair or just watching a video. The primary reason this upgrade was worth it for me is the improved text clarity. This primarily comes from the improved pixel density going from about 106 pixels per inch to 140. But I also find the change in pixel structure from the LG with its additional white pixel layout to the QD OLED's 3 subpixel layout, which makes white text on black backgrounds and vice versa look much flatter and smoother in comparison. It still can show a bit of color fringing on the top and bottom edges like here on this white text, but it's not really an issue for me. This Alienware monitor has a 1700R curve, which is subtle enough that I think it suits the semi-large size and close proximity most people will use it at. But honestly, whether this was curved or a flat design, I'd get used to it pretty quickly and don't think I prefer one or the other here with this 32 inch size. If you're sensitive to noise, keep in mind this Alienware monitor also has a fan inside for cooling. I haven't heard it turn on yet in my experience, but it's winter right now so my office is pretty cold. I can force the fan on in the menu, and at level 1 speed it's nearly inaudible unless I'm right next to it. And at level 2 I can hear it, but it's not annoying. For anti-reflection handling, this monitor has a smooth glossy top surface finish to it but light reflections are scattered much more on this versus the LG TV. This makes it look much less like a mirror in comparison if that's important for you, but it was never really a big issue for me. The other obvious difference here is how the blacks look grey in the side-by-side -side comparison, which is an unfortunate limitation with current QD OLED panels not having a polarizer and my office having a lot of natural daylighting. This mostly goes away during night, but even just a ceiling light at night still will have a small impact on the normally inky blacks. 
I also noticed the glossy coating on my screen has a lot of micro scratches fresh out of the box. To be fair, I never see these in normal usage and only noticed because I was blasting a light for testing purposes, but I do feel like the coating is softer than what I normally see, so I'll just try to be more careful when handling the screen to avoid further damage. One of my favorite upgrades I made for my LG TV was adding a macro pad, which I'm also doing with this Alienware monitor to make controlling it super easy. This can be done using their Dell Display Manager software to control and add hotkeys to change the input source. This monitor also supports picture by picture and picture in picture for displaying multiple inputs, which is neat. It's a little small on this 32 inch display having two input sources, but I would love using this feature if we ever get a larger ultra wide design. And you can also toggle it on and off with command prompts to Dell Display Manager that I also programmed into my macro pad. So those are my thoughts on the Alienware AW3225 QF monitor. It's not my perfect monitor yet, as I wish it was a little wider at times for multitasking, had a USB-C input for my laptop, an audio jack for my speakers, and blacks look better in my bright office. And of course, OLED burn-in is still a risk that needs to be considered. But this 32 inch 4K OLED monitor fixed my main complaint with text clarity and color fringing that I had with the LG TVs that makes this upgrade worth it for me. But there's also lots of other OLED monitors to come out this and next year that might be even better options. But those are my thoughts. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know what to do and I'll see you in the next one.